Recently, Paul Tassi, a writer at Forbes, wrote a column titled, If you don't know Bethesda's Rage 2 is coming out in four days, I wouldn't blame you. In it, Tassi calls Rage 2's lack of wide-scale marketing strange, pointing out that, over the past few years, Bethesda's not only failed to develop a hit, but that when the company has been in the news, it hasn't been for the best reasons. It's an opinion I didn't find unreasonable, and even agreed with to a degree. Soon after sharing the article on Twitter, Rage 2's official Twitter handle responded, saying, LOL, who even are you? I find this response interesting for a few reasons, and while some may see it as an eye-rolling attempt to look edgy on social media, I think there's a little more to it. In a follow-up piece, Tassi assumed the Rage 2 Twitter account was only playing a character, one, as he says, with the attitude of the game itself, so memeing something dismissive at me to try and go for an epic own is pretty on brand for that game. I talk with Bethesda PR from time to time, and I've had no personal issues issues with them to date. Tassie, I believe, is correct here. A quick look through Rage 2's Twitter timeline and there's no shortage of flamboyance and self-aware jokes, but even with this being the case, I still see Rage 2's jab as a little distasteful. It's a marketing ploy I find hollow and insincere. As Tassie discussed, Bethesda's recent history as both publisher and developer has been rough, but there's a lot in his piece he doesn't dig into. Fallout 76's launch was terrible, sure, but just prior to that, Bethesda's controversy was the Creation Club, where it sold game mods while disingenuously attempting to claim the mods somehow weren't mods. Whatever your opinions on Fallout 76 or the Creation Club may be, the fact remains that Bethesda's recent appearances in the news didn't happen for great reasons. What bothers me about this tweet is that, while Rage 2's branded Twitter brashness may be in character, it mirrors a brand that Bethesda itself has sported over the years. A brand that's felt increasingly contrived and tired due to successive controversies. Consider Todd Howard, Bethesda director and executive producer who, I'd argue, serves as the company's de facto public face. Howard's famous for a cavalier stage presence full of bravado and vulgarity and, much like the Rage 2 Twitter account, self-aware humor. One could argue, on stage, he plays a bit of a character. Who Todd Howard is in real life, I have no idea, but his on-stage persona is part of the company's outward personality, its brand. Keeping this in mind, I wonder how our perception of Todd Howard, and by extension Bethesda, would change if we were to juxtapose Howard's reveal of Fallout 76 at E3 2018 to how the game actually turned out. But also, like many of you, we have always wanted to see what our style of game could be with multiplayer. So many of us talk about experiences in our games but we've never experienced them together. So about four years ago, we hit upon an idea that is perfect for Fallout. Open world, survival, every person and character is real. And it was an idea that we just couldn't shake. We knew we had to do it and do it in a really big way. Fallout 76 wasn't just a buggy launch, but released as one of the worst reviewed games the company's ever developed. How could Howard's speech about an idea Bethesda had four years ago and his excitement over Fallout 76's pre-order glow-in-the-dark map, a map of the world that glows in the fucking dark, not ring hollow when seeing how the game was eventually delivered to consumers. What's more is that during that same show, Howard referenced Bethesda's E3 2015 conference, where he stood on stage and explained the ease of Fallout 4's new building mechanic, which of course would turn out to be not so streamlined. And one of the great things about having a fully dynamic game engine is all of this just works. Three years later, while showing off Fallout 76, which we now know was destined for disappointed consumers, Howard joked, And that uh, sometimes it doesn't just work. At what point does self-referential humor and social media boisterousness become pandering, patronizing, and an insincere sidestepping of the things you tell consumers? At what point does putting on face for consumers become, to put it plainly, bullshitting consumers? We may not be able to define such a line, but I think Bethesda's crossed it, and Rage 2's reply to Tassie is just the latest example, even if small. It's a microcosm of a brand that, in 
recent years has told consumers half-truths, utilized unreasonable review policies for media, and, perhaps most importantly, whose development side hasn't produced a new, highly reviewed game since 2015's Fallout 4. This year, Bethesda will hold its E3 conference on June 9th, and you have to wonder how the company will reconcile its 2018 conference with Fallout 76's launch and everything that's transpired since. Will Todd Howard trot on stage with his recognizable swagger, joke about more Bethesda mistakes, and show off some gaudy pre-order bonus for a soon-to-release game? Or will the mood be a bit different? It'll be interesting to see. Regardless, companies shouldn't be rewarded or celebrated for bullshitting consumers or the media. Tassie's original criticism was reasonable, respectfully written, and an honest evaluation of Bethesda's current state as a business. Bethesda's conduct over the past few years isn't one to be cheered and giggled at, no matter how the company may want the public to perceive it.